Hi Captain, your Chinese fan here. This game, though started with an unsatisfying road, actually can't be bothered with reading this anymore. Let's switch it up a little. Hit the tape, John! The early game didn't go so well My roach push got sent back to hell But my mutiling harassment did some damage The goddess of victory smiled at me I thought his MMR was free But then his tier one unit killed my brood lord Toss is him, Toss is him, Toss is him, Toss is him. Oops, I played the wrong chord. Wow, what a fantastic vocal performance. Um, so, yeah, he seems to think Protoss is a little bit imbalanced because tier 1 units managed to take out his Brute Lords and a host of other. He did. A lot of damage with Mura Ling. And then what else was there? Right, his Roach Queen push field. Now, this form already, okay, it, it things start going in my head. You know what I mean? So the things start, the cock wheels start, start turning. They're a bit rusty. My brain hasn't worked this hard since last week, I owe this. Um, but basically, what I'm thinking right now is an unsatisfying Roach push probably means his Roach push gets absolutely slaughtered, okay? His Roach Push got owned. And then he still thinks that he should be able to win. Now, imagine if the roles here were reversed. And we got a Protoss to uh, to send me this replay. And the Protoss would say something along the lines of, well, uh, my my one base 4 gate failed. And then I still managed to come back in the game through brilliant DT harass. Everyone would be up in arms. Deservedly so. But with Zerg, somehow this is kind of understood to be okay they do a a very very dedicated all-in or, or pressure it fails and then they still want to be able to macro out of it now that is that is interesting to me it's kind of the audacity that the zerk player has thinking like hey i deserve to still be in the game even though everything i did so far completely sucked so these are some of the things we're going to be paying attention to when we will make our decision now of course we don't want to be too critical of our zerk player he already has a, a diminished you know uh, mental faculty as as we are aware that m most zergs do do have that issue um so we're going a little bit light on him uh he gets his third base blocked by a probe i didn't know this was a thing but you just you'd love to see this type of stuff all right this by the way is a, is a master's game i didn't mention all of that because this forum was honestly so good i thought this can be read out loud there needs to be something more and i think uh the delivery here was better than just your, your standard reading. Um, skips a queen? What was... Wait, he got his hatchery before his second queen? Okay, okay. So it's like a 20 hatchery. This is this is kind of like... So, so usually there's, there's two ways to play. Either you get your hatchery at 20 supply, which means at like 148. You have a faster, faster creep at your third base. Uh, you can build a spore more easily. Uh, but then you have to delay your queens. Now what this guy does is he gets his hatchery after his first queen, but before the second. So he gets none of the advantages of the 20 hatch, but all the disadvantages. Now that's pretty smart, I have to admit. I, I do like that. I, I do like it when people are just creative and make something that was good before just a lot worse by injecting a little bit of their own thoughts in there. That's uh, That's just cool. This is a bit, imagine if uh, after our man Vincent van Gogh, or as he's called, Van Gogh, had painted the, the Starry Starry Night. And then and then someone else would walk over, you know, Starry Starry Night, it looks nice, but what about, I spit on it, and just spits on it. And, you know, has a little bit of a, a, a cup of coffee he gets out of his pocket, just throws it on the Starry Starry Night and says, now this looks a lot better. No, that's not the case. You just ruined Starry Starry Night. It's a beautiful painting, by the way. Another fine piece of Dutch art. Good job, Vincent. Proud of you, buddy. 
he, he can't hear it though. Uh, Vincent, I think, died in the 1700s or 1800s. Uh, very sad story. An artist that was never recognized for art. A bit like me. An artist never quite recognized uh, for his art. Um, while he was still alive. We have two links going down in the main base. Ooh, look, a probe got a kill. Oh, look at him. We got him. What do we call this probe? Because he's a warrior as well. He's both. He's, he's not only a worker. It immediately went back to work as well. Didn't even take any real damage, you know? Like it. This is like the type of guy. You sometimes read these stories like man fights off lion in the jungle while delivering post. You know, like the the postman in the jungle. And it is it, then in the interview, it's like yeah, you know. And then, then I still delivered my letters that day. That is where are you? I, I want to call him Ben. Ben the probe. It sounds like a good name for a postal worker as well. He just continues with his day job. Legendary guy. Legendary guy. So some dead reflexes over there. That's crazy. All right. Two adapts uh, moving forward. I, I'm a big fan of the pros already, by the way. Three gate or... Okay, I'm not a big fan of what the pros is doing. But we're not here to talk about what the pros is doing. We're here to look at the Zerg. Mm. So far, the Zerg has lost two workers and has killed absolutely nothing. There's a pylon at the third base, so that will make up for the two workers lost. Never do that. If you're a Protoss player and you see this and you think, hey, that looks cool. I don't care if it looks cool, it's terrible, okay? It's, it's not worth it. Uh, here comes an Oracle. Actually gets a worker. Nice. Good job. You know, that's that's actually good. That's good. It gets a worker. So three workers down so far. Early game, looking pretty tight for our Protoss player. Gets another Oracle. Uh, three gates. Nexus at a normal timing as well. This Toss build is looking normal. This Zerg build is looking normal as well. Skipping spores where he can, which is the way that Zerg is kind of supposed to play. I feel like a bit too heavy on the Queens too quickly though, as he is floating a lot of larvae and doesn't have the money to put it into uh, into drones, which is what you want. So he's, he thinks he's being safe by building this many Queens this fast, but in reality he's actually cutting workers for it. Did he just get a worker with a Ling? Uh, don't worry, we got, we got Ben. Come on, Ben. Right, come on. I bet Ben is gonna get a second kill. Ben! Come on, buddy. The world needs you. But when the world needed him the most, he disappeared. No, Ben? Oh, no way. Oh, he's poking the bear. He's... <laughs> ben is going again. Oh my god. Look at that. No real damage, though. He scared him away. Scared the lion away. The second he saw, he's like, oh my god, this guy has like a notch on his belt. Killed the previous lion as well. He goes to the natural where there's some losers working. Yeah, need to get some friends to help him. He also took real damage, of course. Didn't fight back. Just took it. What a wanker. All right. Um, where was I? I can't remember where I was in my story. Oh, yeah. So th this gets a couple of kills. So uh, once you only have two queens at a base, you probably are going to need a spore once there's two oracles out. Or you're going to or you're gonna need to be in super good position. The map vision is pretty poor. Overlord spread is... Hello, where's my camera? So, so far, six workers gone down on the side of the Zerg player, but also an Oracle went down. So, honestly, not the worst trade. He has seven queens, three more on the way. He's going to be going up to ten. Hmm, kind of like it, honestly. I, I don't mind any of these moves. His drones are going all over the place, though. Usually, you don't really want that. But, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it real. We'll keep it real. we we'll say, you know what? That is fine. Gets a pile here, man. My man is preparing hard for a potential all-in, isn't he? The pylon over here, the lack of gases. I guess he doesn't see a gas over here, so it kind of makes sense. Ooh, get some more kills? No way. Oh, he sees no gas over here. Or he thought he saw no gas. Right now, if I'm the if I'm the toss player, I'd, he gets four gateways. I'd be like, I'd be getting cannons, not gateways, you know? I'd be super afraid. He's getting Storm, Templar. Probably want to get some Immortals or something like that. Maybe even want to get like a Robo Bay at this point, try to pop out some Disruptors. I feel like this is such an obvious push though. He's skipping his fourth base, he's lacking. Okay, if you're trying to hide that you don't have all your gases, perhaps this isn't the gas that you don't take. Like this is, this is the clearest gas. You know, this is, this is the easiest to scout for tools. Like every single time the Oracle flies into the main or anything goes to the main, it will see the lack of this gas. Like, don't take this one or something like that. Or even this one. Like, these are way harder to scout for Toss. 
also probably should fake a fourth base when you play something like this. Otherwise your opponent will realize, hey, what's going on over here? We see the toss goes up to like freaking infinite gateways. Honestly doing a fine job. I like this Protoss player. He seems to be, he seems to kind of understand what needs to be done to win games, you know? He's, he's a winner. Gets Storm, that type of stuff, sends in two Adepts again. Just shift clicks a couple of these workers. Now sees 35 Roaches. He's like, hey, that's off. Gets an Immortal and a Void Ray immediately. Starts cannons. Three cannons, a battery, four cannons. The Distos is a brain toss, is what we call these guys. A very good brain. Holy crap, he has no units though. How is it possible that this push had no Ravagers? Is this a joke? Oh, I thought he built it in front of him. To be fair, I think if you keep the this one over here, imagine... Oh, he doesn't see it. I think now he's... Oh, he probably just barely didn't catch it. Oh, that's unfortunate. And then he walks on top of it. You can kind of see it, but I can see why it's a bit difficult. Pop! Pops open. So this is not a great start. Then he walks down and gets all of these caught as well. Not the greatest storm because it wasn't quite necessary, but I mean... Oh, keeps walking down. It's like half of my army is still stasis uh, down a ramp. Hasn't cast a single bow yet, by the way, to break the single force field. Force field almost runs out before uh, the bile hits. Finally breaks the force field. Stasis is gone. Oh, here come the biles. Almost instantly this time. But he's already lost like 15 roaches for free at this point. He hasn't even seen the cannons yet. Does he just go back home at this point? Or what does he do? Floating a casual 800 as well. This toss has a good defense, by the way. Like, honestly, very solid defense. Good force fields. Good, good like, zone control. Uh, gets hit by a baller. Loses one time. Once again, good force fields. Really quite impressive. This push was a complete failure. An unsatisfying roach push. Very unsatisfying. So right now, if we just have a quick look at the situation, okay? We just, we just, we just take a, perhaps we, we do some mid-game review. Ding, da, da, ding, 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 ding. This is the mid-game review. Ping, 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 ping. ping. I just did that in case Hamster doesn't have the old tune still alive somewhere. And otherwise you can play both of them, Hamster. You got my permission. Um, okay, so let's have a quick look, okay? So far, he's lost. 25 Roaches, 4 Ravagers, 40 Zerglings, and 10 Drones. He is down 11 Workers. Yeah, 11 Workers. Uh, his army comp is a lot worse than his opponent's. His fourth base is probably starting at around the same time as his opponent's. Supply is equal. He is completely dead, ladies and gentlemen. This game, by by any means, should be completely over. This is this is not a game that should be playable here for the Zerg anymore. Um, as he decides, it might be a wise decision to keep pushing into this army with inferior forces. Um, actually, gets a couple of decent traits. I'm I'm semi surprised. There's an immortal idling in the back. Okay, this this still wasn't great. Overall, units lost, also massively in favor of TOS. But the main thing, of course, is that the mining for the TOS has been very, very good uh, compared to what it's supposed to be usually uh, for TOS. Um, as he's actually mining more than his Zerg opponent. That's never supposed to be the cake. The cake. Never supposed to be the cake, guys. Never supposed to be the case. There we go, with an S, not a, not a K. Not even that close in the alphabet. Uh, Oracle goes across the map, tries to get a little scout in. Blink gets a research. Chrono boosted plus two. This toss, I like the way he plays, honestly. He's like, you know what? I could counterattack, but what if I go straight into roaches and then I might still lose that fight? No, I play it safe. I get a fort base, get a cannon, uh, get blink in case of mutalisk. Start sending out zealot runbys as well. Oh, this is this is beautiful. Uh, I mean, the zealot runby shouldn't be able to do anything, but what the zealot runby does is it checks the opponent's army. It gets to see, hey, what is coming out of the axe? And also, what units are you using to defend? Stasis Ward gets used. Oh my god. Plus is queuing up things left, right and center. I think he missed the, the Mutalisk flyout though, no? I don't think he saw it. I think there's some, because there's seven Mutas already. Okay, this is the Mutaling harassment. Now, please do not be confused here as this Mutaling harassment needs to do a crap ton of damage. Right now it's 62 against 78 workers. And the toss has already been mining. So if he kills 16 workers with this, that won't be enough. He needs to kill like 30 workers with this to get... Oh, wrong button. He needs to kill 30 workers to get back to a semi-even game. 
So Oracle remains alive. So I like that. I like that he doesn't show the Mutas. I think that's a good call by the Zerg here. Probably the first good call he's had so far in this game. Um, Muralisk. I don't quite see where the links are. Oh, here come the links. Links heading. Well, they're going to just fight into an Arkle. No, they're going to run into the natural. Look at that. So this is a bunch of workers going down. We're at 72 right now. These links are going to kill a lot as well. Oh, no. Okay, this was a crap. Holy crap, he gets a lot of workers. Remember when I said he needs to kill at least, what did I say? 30 or something? 35? He definitely got that. He got he got like 30, 34 workers here. We get a counterattack from the Toss, who loses half of his army while walking across the map. Loses his Templar, most importantly. Does have a Zealot run, by the way. So, even though the Zerg is dishing out a lot of damage, he's also receiving a fair amount of damage. He already lost five whole workers. Um... His fort base still isn't mining. If we take a look at the income right now, mineral-wise, it's actually still in favor of Toss. Gas-wise, isn't the case. Oh my god, this is just gonna get cleaned up, isn't it? Yeah, plus two roaches, a little bit too. Okay, this game is just over. Okay, we can stop pretending now. It's it's actually over. The main base gets absolutely ravaged. He can the, so Zerg can just literally move across the map and and win the game most likely at this point. Right, fifty-four. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's just what he's gonna do. Now, let's see what he does behind this. He gets two more overlords because he wants to be never supply blocked, especially... This Zerk is very smart, okay? He is... Most people just anticipate for what's about to happen in this game, but this Zerk, in case mid-game there will be a patch where you can be above 200 supply, he's already building extra overlords just in... in just in case, just for that specific scenario. Instead of saying, you know, maybe I want 10 extra drones. No, he says, let me get three extra overlords. What if Blizzard patches this game mid-map? This is just the brilliant type of thinking that you only get from uh, these cognitively limited Zerg players. Okay, so everything dies. Now he's like, well, I could do a lot of things. I could, for example, not attack the cannons. He just, no, he goes here, this is fine, actually. Maybe use a couple of roaches to clear the, the probes. No, also not entirely necessary. That's nine more roaches. He does need to be careful here because if you do this... So the reason why very often this type of counterattack can be a mistake is because he's not, he, he isn't on that high of a drone count himself. So if you don't have any anti-air and... Let's 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 find a hypothetical scenario where a Voidray, for example, would get 20 freaking kills, a majority of those roaches. Yeah, that that could potentially be an issue if then your Mutas are attacking the, the Stalkers in the main rather than dealing with the Voidray that has been doing free damage for the past minute and a half. So now all of a sudden this game isn't actually that good. He gets 16 drones at this point. Probably should be getting into like an infestation pit and carapace upgrades at the same time he's I, th I still think zerg is ahead okay i still think zerg is in a good spot just simply because he he's now up to 73 workers he can go up to eight gas um the toss army looks like crap like it consists of nothing he's gonna go melee upgrades i feel like it would actually just be better to either get Carapace or Infestation Pit, Hydra then, um, and then go into Lurkers. Like, you're playing against a Toss that is on one and a half mining base, um, while you already have range upgrades. It's not like his army is going to suddenly consist of anything else than he has had for a while. And there's no way he can get a big enough army or a type of unit that can deal with Lurkers at this point, I think. So what you do as the Zerg, yeah, I, I don't I don't mind this. Just kind of flying around with his Muralists, try to not lose them. Just keep your opponent at home. And you're forcing out Stalkers. And then... Let's get plus one upgrades. Like, you're, like, this is the one unit that just doesn't do it at all. You're either getting Banelings, or you're getting Lurkers. Like, there's no... There's nothing else. That, well, there's many things you can do. Probably, you probably could tech into Ultra at this point with how far ahead he is, but... I, like, the wisest unit composition would be either Lurker or, or, or Baneling. And if he isn't doing either, then, well... He might actually make it a little bit difficult for himself. Okay, Dark Templar gets warped in somewhere. Okay, he's a 3 Dark Templar. 
with no detection, obviously. Very wise, very wiser player. He's like, you know what? I'm so far ahead right now. Rather than investing a minor amount of money into detection, I can just replace everything I lose because I am so rich. That is very, very smart. Yeah, okay, this DT will die instantly. He has a crap ton of money floating right now. He has 3k resources in the bank right now. I'm not quite sure what he's waiting for. He has 26 larvae. You could just be building like either more drones or just any other unit and probably just move across the map and kill this base again. At this point he could probably max out on Corruptor and just pee on this base. Literally peeing on that base would be better than having it in the bank. I'm not sure if actually this is true. I think he probably could though. But also just like getting 26 or well, at this point 32 roaches probably would just be fine. It actually would just be fine. He went down to 61 workers and he doesn't... Oh, he heard me. He heard me. He's getting 8 corruptors. 8 corruptors here. Nice. I'm proud of you, man. Muda's still flying around. I think he's lost 7 Muda's killing 3 workers in the past 5 minutes. Look at this. Look at this. this micro. I love that how hard he's microing. This is just great. I think this is... This is the... The pinnacle of lower level games. You have a guy floating 3k resources. Microing 4 Mutalisk against a stationary building and losing a mutalisk. Let, let's just watch this in slow motion. This is just great. Look at this. What's this APM while doing this? He's 309 APM controlling four mutalisk against a stationary building. This is just great. This is like, you know the machines you sometimes have where you can like see how strong you are, like you hit it and you see the power. This is basically like getting knocked out by one of those machines. As the ball returns to hit, like, dish, you get knocked out. He actually got taken out by a building that can chase or can do anything. Well, well, all of his focus is on this. These three Muras are his life right now. This is just great. It's, this is actually pinnacle, pinnacle lower level play. And this is in Masters, guys. This is high level Masters, okay? This is, this is no joke, all right? This is no joke. 16, okay, loses one more Mura to the Stalkers that were just idling here. Probably loses all of his Muras at this point now. Wouldn't be surprised, yeah, yeah. Whoop, drone gets uh, popped out as well. I feel like my game speed was not correct. That's okay. TT gets a couple more. He hasn't rebuilt any of his drones, by the way. Uh, probably realizing, he's like, okay, I have enough in the bank. Why would I... He, he can't see into the future, right? Like, how can he know that this army won't just straight up win the game for him? Well, he can't, because he can't look into the future. So what he's thinking right now is every time I lose a drone, my army will grow bigger. Because, you know, once you hit the supply cap, I, I like this a lot. I also really love the plus one investment in the links. The never getting Bane, he's just running around with links. Because the Zerg player here thought about his opponent's army composition. He saw Archons and Storm and was like, what I really need right now is units with low HP, very vulnerable to splash damage. Let me upgrade those. And then he built 40 links with plus one. This is the type of high level thinking that you expect from Zerg players. Oh, that was nice. That was, ni that was nice. You're not gonna hear me hate on that move. That was a nice move. He pop up and boom, out of the sky. That was a good move. You know what? I like that move. Personally, now he gets the lurker then. This is just great. Finally starts plus three as well after he built what 12 corruptors yeah, maybe maybe lurker actually thinking about my opponent's army it's like a single immortal nothing that can really damage my lurkers at all just gets in with the links i wonder if this is a good trade at this point i don't think it is he just keeps losing workers as well by the way which is fantastic to watch still on four bases as his fifth gets taken out for i think the 12 the 13th time I just said 13 because I don't know how to pronounce 12th. 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 The 12th time. Moves forward with three corruptors, indicating that something's coming. Very often you see this with Terrans as well, when the Medivacs fly way in front of the army, you're like, aha, that's a Terran push coming. It's the same with corruptors. Like, ah, three corruptors. Uh, the rest of the idiot can't be too far behind. And that's a fact. Well, actually, not a fact because this is pretty far behind. I like that he's already trading with it with his Roach army. He sees like Storm Immortal Stalk. He's like, I wonder if I can weaken those already a bit with my my Caveman Roach Ravager army. Takes out the rocks, 
Just maybe fight into this before the Brood Wars arrive. Yeah, very smart. Now this is good. So he's trading out a lot of the roaches, so there's more space on his screen for the Broodlord. He doesn't... He doesn't... Oh, just keep them in the back. as like a backup for when the Broodlords die by themselves. I like those moves, honestly. I think that's smart. Roach Broodlord, of course, a unit composition with great synergy as well. See, the Roach is really doing a lot of damage here. So far, I've tanked two storms already. The Roaches here aren't so much for dealing damage, I feel like, but more for just a general distraction. And making the opponent believe that you're a complete clown. Which, I think at this point, the, the Toss is scratching his head. It's like, oh my god. I was down like 35 workers three minutes ago. I have no clue how I'm still in this game. Now here comes the famed Broodlord push. With, with Roach Ravager. So Roach Ravager tanks another storm. Then the Broodlords fly through an entire storm duration. Maybe if he does that two more times, he'll just lose them before the fight. Four links take out this base. Plus one really coming in handy here. Good blink forward, actually, by this Toss. Um, some decent storms. I mean, the Toss is just microing this very, very well. And the Zerk, I think it might have been better if he would have just taken a shower once he started taking this forward. It's just A moved. I feel like the units by themselves have better AI than what this guy has shown so far. Loses all of his Broodlords. And all of his roaches. Who would have thought? If you absolutely show zero micro, you have plus one broodlords without any real support. Well, I, well, you can call roaches support, I guess, but they don't really are a support. They aren't really a supporting unit usually. Like something like a baneling or like infestors here would have been sick, honestly. But banelings also would have been fine. Like you can just bless these stalkers so well. Still six corruptors there in case the air switch of the toss on three bases ever does commence. I still wonder what the unit loss looks like. 34k. Which means that the Toss actually has mined almost as much as the Zerg. Because the Zerg just completely forgot to rebuild stuff. I love that the Toss is going back home as well. He's like clearing some creep. So I can't... He understands that his opponent will eventually probably attack into him again. Okay, two Broodlords. Uh, the tier 1 units. This is not a tier 1 army, by the way. This is like... Stalker, Immortal, Archon, Templar. Like, the Zerg army was way more primitive than what the Protoss had. It felt like the Zerg always fights in like little segments where he first throws half of his army away or tanks so much damage that his army is half useless. And then it's like, okay, now I can go again. So he still has two, brood two Broodlords, sends them forward. Wouldn't want them to be supported by anything, obviously. That would be dangerous. Oh! Good blinks. Hey, his micro has actually been pretty good. The Toss micro, that is. Now he just showers this in storms. He needs to be a little bit careful. Yeah, good blink back. One more storm. Clears every single Ravager. Well, now micro's forward. This is a close game still. Like, this has honestly just been a crazy game. I don't understand. Oh. Wait, does the Toss not win? He's gonna attack with five roach and a brute lord, isn't he? Ah, he rebuilt links. That's brilliant. So I feel like the thing I could really use is links. Without adrenal glands, without any upgrades against the potential of plus three zealots. Like a single zealot would probably be able to take out this army. Oh no, please, this Templar storm. Storm yourself, storm yourself. Uh, there's only one link. Sad. Dude, this game is way closer than I thought it would be. He starts mining again. Toss is still on mining because he has this base now. 62 workers. I love this move. Resources are scarce. He's like, you know what? What would be a good move? Sending my Zerglings into a death trap. He's lucky that the Toss didn't pay attention. These Zerglings should have been dead. I guess a lot of them are kind of dead. That's like giving away a lot of money right there. How actually, how actually is the Zerg going to lose this? Is he just... Just sit back, do nothing, and then lose eventually, I guess. I mean, he's up in workers once this base finishes. He also still has a lurker then, doesn't he? I'm glad that that hasn't been used at all. That probably would not have been used at all against stalkers. I guess there's a couple of immortals now as well. Brutal lurker, though, is a composition. Good luck killing that. 
it's not a real composition, but against this army it probably would do okay. Couple more Ravagers, nice. He's just gonna get blasted by the Toss Micro is very good. Individual Blink Stalker Micro, like just the way he moves his units is actually impressive, and this guy is just continuously standing in storm. Okay, I'm not too sure about that Blink. Uh, I can live with it. It's just blasted. Completely over. Actually forgets the GG. Actually forgot the GG. My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, your queen push failed and the goddess of victory didn't just smile at you. She basically handed you the win. Like this game was so over, like actually so extremely over. I have no clue how you managed to lose this. It is simply impressive to say the least. Like you probably, uh, you had so many options, like literally anything would have been fine, but you just sat there, floated like three, three and a half K resources. I have no clue why you did that. You had larva available, you had buildings available. You started bleeding out worker after worker, after worker, after worker, never rebuilding them, never expanding towards a fifth, never changing your composition away from roaches. Why would you not just go into lurkers? Why would you just not just go into banelings? Why would you not just add two or three investors into your Broodlord army? Like, there's so many questions that I have. And I don't even want to ask them to you. Because I, f I feel like looking at this game, looking at your... The level... The level of decisions that you make, your answers probably will just confuse me even more. I don't want to ever hear from you again. Got that? You suck. And you suck really hard, buddy. Nice. All right, that's going to be it for this episode of Is It In Bar? Do I suck? If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget to smash the like button as well and leave a comment down below. So it helps all of me and my, my man Hamster a lot as well. Thank you and bye-bye.